one of the things you mentioned as well that sometimes gets forgotten by parents is the booster seat. Why, and you've already given a, a pretty good idea of why it's important, but why is that important? You know, I have to tell you, whenever I talk to parents, and I have, I have kids, um, I have an 11-year-old who's still in a booster seat. And the law in our state is uh, up to eight, but he's still in a booster seat at 11. I think the most important thing to convey to parents is that seat belts are designed for adults. Mm -hmm. They're not designed for kids. And you can understand that because you want to be able to fit, you know, up to an adult in the back seat, even though a lot of kids are riding in the back seats. They're, those seat belts are made for adults. And so the problem with a seat belt fit is unless you are of a certain height, and we basically say 57 inches or 4'9", you're likely not going to enjoy a good seat belt fit. And so what that booster seat does is it is able to lift you up a little bit so it makes the seat belt fit. And the reason why you want that seat belt to fit is you want it to be over the really strong, hard bones in your body, not the soft tissue. So you want that lap belt to fit you low on your hips and go across your hip bones, not across your stomach. You want the shoulder belt to come right across your sternum. And for kids who are too small or too short, it's going to cut them in the neck. They're going to be really uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Any of us would. And so they either put it underneath their arm or they put it behind their back because they don't like that seat belt riding them there. It's uncomfortable. But that soft tissue right here is not made to hold that seat belt. And that's where we see spinal cord injuries and other things happening because it's not low across their hips. The real controlling factor of, of whether or not you're going to have a good seat belt fit it's actually the length of your femur. And so it's about how long that leg bone is and can you sit in the seat with your bottom up against the back or the bite of the seat and your knees breaking comfortably over the edge of the seat. Because watch kids, if their knees don't break over the edge of the seat comfortably, they're going to slouch down until yeah. their knees do. Yeah. And once they slouch down, they start to get that belt across their tummy and then across their neck. And that's not going to do anything for them in a, in a serious crash. And so what that booster seat does is it lifts them up a little bit, it positions the belt, the lap belt correctly, and it gets the shoulder belt in a better place. And so the kids will be more comfortable. They won't move it around to where it's not protecting them. And it provides them the protection that the seat belt is designed to provide for an adult passenger. Now, the problem is, is kids generally, through CDC growth charts, don't really get to that height, that magic height that we're looking for at 57 inches or 4'9" until they're about 11 years old. And okay. so most of our booster seat laws aren't getting the smaller kids because that's the thing. Kids are different. An eight, your eight-year-old might be a different size than my eight-year-old. And so we all know there's some kids that are big for their age, some kids that are small for their age. And so it's really important to make sure that you have good seat belt fit. Take your child and their booster seat to any fitting station and ask for an assessment if you, if you have questions. It's really it's really critical if you're going to have them buckled up, if you're going to have them restrained, that it provide that protection that you're, that you're looking for.